death is usually painless and intentional. Hello, and we say good day to you once again. We are the Playing Council, and we're very excited to continue these interactions. How would you like to begin our conversation today? Hello, I'm also very excited to be doing this episode because I'm going to ask you about life in the Pleiades. So, first of all, can you give us some idea of your physical appearance if we were to meet you in physical form? We resemble humans very much. We also have a diverse expression of skin pigments. We, in addition to the pigments humans express, we have blue pigments to our skin as well. In fact, it is at the base level in all beings skin to some degree. So at a base, we are more bluish than we are reddish, though there are variations in the lightness of the skin, you could say. We would appear what you might consider slightly elven as our faces are more narrow than humans. We tend to wear different sorts of garments for occasions in our more casual and as well regular day moments. We wear sort of flowing garments often, though sometimes, of course, we don't have clothes on at all. There is some genetic connection with beings that are not related to humans in us that creates certain angular features in our faces that humans do not have. And yes, we're generally taller and certainly more slender than humans. And um, descriptions I've heard are that you have mainly blonde hair and blue or green eyes. Is that true? That is incorrect. Ah. Oh. So what, what kind of hair and eyes do you have? Many different colors, similar to those of your world. Blonde, red, brown, black, blue, naturally, yes. Is that hair or eyes? <laughs> hair. So some of you have blue hair. Slightly. You would consider it blue, greenish, blonde, or shades of blue in dark hair colors that might appear black, but have blue highlights when you look close up. Of the people on Earth, who are most similar to you? None, though some describe us as being more Nordic. We would see some slight similarity only in that it is true that there's on average higher height among these northern European populations. Okay, thank you. So the Pleiades is a cluster of many stars. I think there must be some distance between these stars. So surely there are diverse ETs across the area that uh, we call the Pleiades. Can you describe a bit of the range of the ETs and any common features across all of the Pleiadian beings? There are other sorts of beings in our world. There are different kinds of animals, of course. There are feline-like Pleiadian beings and canine-like ones as well, though they do not represent our collective and are not typically the beings who reach out to you, even though they live in that same Pleiadian star cluster. You might meet Pleiadians who appear very different. They can be Pleiadian in the sense that they are from that star cluster, but they don't represent the Pleiadian council who speaks on behalf of the souls congregated around the stars Alcyon and Maya. Can you repeat those star names? Alcyon and what was the second one? Alcyon and Maya. Okay, we have to look that up on a star map. Okay, that, that's great. Um, could you give us some idea of what we would experience if we came to visit your own world? 
and what would astonish us most as humans if we saw your daily life? Well, you would have to make a vast transition between the vibration you're at now to the vibration we exist within. You would have to become essentially quasi-physical beings. And this itself would be very astonishing because things are less physical. They are less dense. There is less stability in their manifestation in that we can use the power of our minds to effectively bend and shift between different dimensional perspectives. So in this way, we're also able to walk between different uh, concurrent dimensions of our world. And this happens seamlessly for us. Again, we are constantly experiencing information and input, you could say, of concurrent experiences taking place across time and space uh, in our other incarnations. And this information is overlaid on our experience of our present surroundings. It is always synchronistically connected with our experiences, so it does flow seamlessly. Though this is a common experience for all quasi-physical beings in our dimension, though there are many variances. So do you have, like we have day and night, and we have years, do you have these units in your, these kind of things or something like that? Well, yes, absolutely. Though it's just different because there's a different uh, rotation and orbit for our planet and our stars. Okay, um, do you um, express like social roles or rank like with clothing or hairstyles or some feature or do you just recognize people telepathic telepathically? We have different outfits according to the occasion. When we are at home on our planet, we tend to wear more flowing garments or nothing at all. The clothing we wear on ships is more tight-fitting and suit-like, you could say. This serves the different, different purposes. Sometimes we also adapt our wardrobe to meet the cultures we are interacting with, not necessarily wearing their wardrobe, but expressing ourselves in a way that they might understand more clearly. Is your world made out of atoms and things the same as ours, or is it actually different when you say you, you experience it in a different way, or we would raise our vibration to be there? Is your world made of atoms the same as ours? No, we are made of atoms and all of the same basic com chemical components of life. Though, yes, there may be some elements to add to your periodic table as you explore mm, the further reaches of space. Okay. Do you live longer than we do? And how healthy and happy are your elderly? We live... Uh, the translation into your years would be between five and 700 years on average. We experience aging in a very different way. And we do not experience the same level of degradation of our bodies as we age. That's quite extraordinary. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Spaceship of Babel, we are gliding through the stars on a five-year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars, a celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you will hear us coming through a whisper in the dark. In the There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here, and Obi Wan Kenobi as we whisper in the dark.
us in the hole We all pray cause I have made us so we won't be growing old As we speak our further minor with the strangers of the bar Who can hear us on the phone as we whisper in the dark Whisper in the dark Maple juice is brilliant as we sizzle like a spark I am lying at a scene 